<laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we want to welcome everybody for joining us this Saturday afternoon for this amazing artist talk for our uh, 2021 fresh um, biannual um, artist talk for the exhibition. And um, we want this to just be a free space, a safe space for us to just talk about the show, talk about everything that um, kind of led up to this amazing um, opportunity for all of the artists, um, having the, the, the pleasure and the amazing opportunity to work with a new Vikram. Um, again, I am Anepertiti Bowman, the uh, executive director here at Solo Contemporary. And we just wanna thank, thank you all. Thank all of the artists for your time, your dedication, and just being a part of this amazing show. Um, and yes, we have some people coming in. Let's see. All righty then. So yeah, so just wanted to um, have this time so we can just, you know, speak to the show, speak to your work and just speak to the experience overall and um, what we felt, you know, the kind of overall expectation of your work and what that brung, uh, what that brung for us as we were uh, during the show. So uh, next slide. Yes. So the curatorial statement um, between the team and I, and especially with a new um, curatorial statement, um, the theme of Fresh 2021 is resilience. More than a year of setbacks, personal loss, solitude, and mental and physical health struggles have left us feeling exhausted, frustrated, and sad. The artists in Fresh turn these challenges into visions and in doing so, they have helped us to make sense of the strange year we've had. There are moments of connection and even joy as we find one another and our own strengths and voices. It's not always pretty, but it's but it's all it's all the work in Fresh 2021 20, speaks to. It speaks to our truth. So that's pretty much you know uh, what we kind of felt when we saw the work and how um, working with the new and how we kind of expressed with each of your um, with each of your pieces. Moving on. And so moving forward, we're going to hand over the mic to a new, uh, a new Vikram. So um, yeah, take it away anew. <laughs> Thank you, Nefertiti. And thanks again for having me. Um, artists, if I could just remind you all, please mute yourself. Uh, we are going to be doing this really rapid fire. And so um, as your name and your slide comes up, you'll know it's your turn to speak. Um, mostly we'll be going in alphabetical order to give you a little heads up, but we have a couple of artists going first because they have to leave early. Um, so Mia, just to let you know, you're up first. Um, and uh, just, just a couple of procedural things, of course, before I do the intro, mainly just when you see your name and your image, um, there will be a bio slide for each artist followed by your artwork. So please unmute yourself and begin speaking about your work. We won't call on you because we are just moving quickly. So be ready. Um, especially as you know, we're getting closer to the, the first letter of your last name. Thanks. And of course, if you don't do that within say a few seconds, I'll call your name um, and then just go ahead and start. So with that, uh, really happy to be here. I think that, you know, Sola Contemporary provides an important venue for artists who are working and living in South LA and historic South Central. I think that it's important because it bridges two strong constituencies, different generations, different races, different economic brackets, and everybody's an artist. And I think that's really powerful. Um, and a lot of that is what the organization set out to be when it chose to locate itself on Slauson and to bring a community that began in Palos Verdes into this other very different neighborhood in Los Angeles. But I have to say so much also is due to the leadership of Nefertiti and her team um, and the wonderful people that have gotten involved on the board. So I'm just really excited that this opportunity exists for artists. And so I wanted to contribute by being part of this show. Um, I'm also delighted that several of my former students have been able to participate as artists in the show, which is awesome. Um, stu undergraduate students and graduate students, both from UCLA and from USC, along with people who are currently or recently graduated or students at other universities and colleges around the LA area, which was really important to us, especially because students have been some of the greatest um, resilient, just powerful survivors of this really difficult year, um, continuing to stay focused on 
not only their personal growth, but the growth, welfare, and health of their communities, even under pretty extreme difficult conditions for young people to experience. So with that, you know, it's been really wonderful to see some of you be able to participate in this show because I know how much you had to accomplish and surmount just to get here. Uh, even though it doesn't seem like a huge thing to send your work in for a juried show, I will say that most of the students I invited were not able to do it because of how difficult this year has been. So I wanna commend you for being here um, everyone, not just the students, everyone who got it together to submit work, participate in the show, who kept on making work during this crazy year, cheers to you. Uh, we need people like you, we need your work. Uh, and that's why we did the show, because we need to see what people have been doing to keep themselves alive and keep their communities and their families and their friends alive. So with that, you know, that was how we arrived at our theme of resilience. It's kind of, it's hard to put a cheerful spin on the experience that we've had in the last couple of years, um, but we did want to put a positive spin on it because we're in a moment now of rebirth and regrowth in a lot of ways, um, and we want to we want to nurture that, we want to foster that. And for you all, we hope that this will be a good launching point for you into a new proliferation of your own practice. So with that, let's get started. Our first artist is going to be Mia Johnson. Nefertiti, would you mind uh, just manning the unmute? If someone doesn't unmute themselves, you can actually unmute them as the host. Hi, sorry everyone. Hi, no uh, let's get going. I know we're on a timeline. So hi everyone, my name is Mae Johnson. I'm a multidisciplinary artist and work in a variety of media, including sculpture, sewing, text, and installation to explore questions around the human condition. I'm based in Santa Monica and received my bachelor's degree in economic history. Um, and plan to pursue my MFA at CalArts starting in fall 2022. Um, human being, being human was made during early quarantine in which I was living in isolation like most of the people attending, really thinking about what it meant to be, to be human and considering the individual components of the word human being. The human is a scientific material body and to be human as the relation of the word to oneself, considering reason and knowledge, time, past, the past and the future, personal identity and responsibility. The kite, an object that relies on wind to guide the order, um, to guide itself, served as an interesting vehicle to explore the inherent duality intention, operating as its own system and constantly participating in the creation of the piece, depending on the immobility or mobility of its surroundings. I also chose to include the image of Janus, the two-faced Roman god of passage and transition, one face to the future, the other to the past, something that we must constantly keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next artist is Lei Jin Fan. I think that Jin is not able to join us this afternoon. So we'll move on. She is uh, based in China and Los Angeles. And has a wonderful video. Okay, Astrid, Astrid Francis. Astrid also uh, is not able to join us today as well. So we'll just keep going. Um, and here's Astrid's work, beautiful abstract painting. Okay, Beth Levy. So, am I on? Mm -hmm. Oh, hi. Um, I've been uh, painting for about 25 years. I've been uh, drawing and studying my art my whole life. Um, I have a di I have several uh, series of paintings and one of the largest I have is called, that is what I call LA scapes. I've always lived in Southern California. So I tend to paint what I know, which are freeways and restaurant food. Uh, these paintings combine different uh, artistic styles, representation, abstraction, depending on what I want to say. Some are based on humor, my memories, and politics. Uh, this painting is a little different from the others in that I'm uh, just showing it from a single perspective, a single viewpoint. And it's based on a photo I took of the Hollywood Freeway. 
uh, I was a passenger, not a not the driver when I took the photo. And um, I like it because it captures different uh, uh, layers of road movement, grittiness, traffic. Um, and the title, uh, Take the High Road, refers uh, to current politics, Trump politics, but can also refer to climate change. Um, and uh, I enjoyed participating in this show. I like the quality of the work. And um, I would have liked to invite more people, but COVID prevented that. But I, I enjoyed being in this show. Hi everyone, my name is Carmel Katimba. Some might know me as the Zonti Girl as well. I am a Congolese Long Beach based painter, visual designer, and a DJ. I mostly draw my inspiration from my upbringing and my emotions. I am the creator of a piece called Aisha. My belief is that tears are powerful, they're sacred, and they're a way of the hearts. It's a way of your heart to release whatever you're feeling. Um, during the past year, there were a lot of emotions I was feeling I couldn't describe. So just having a little cry session was always great for me and got me through a lot. So that's what I wanted to portray. Hello everyone. My name is Kristen Austin. Um, I am based in Fontana, California. And um, I've been creating artwork all my life, but I've been painting for about six years. Um, I mainly self-taught um, and my, my specialty is acrylic paint. Um, the piece that I have created here is called The Black Woman's Burden. It is a piece that I completed in 2019 um, and I painted it with acrylic paint. Um, the main representation of it is uh, kind of a spinoff off of the um, myth of Atlas and um, it's kind of my idea of what person really holds the weight of the world and in my opinion it is a black woman. Um, it's also a representation of the idea of intersectionality um, which basically explains how um, people's struggles and experiences intersect with um, everyone. And so um, a Black woman's experience, because she is Black and she's a woman, um, her experiences basically branch out into everybody's, uh, everybody else's experiences, whether they're, and you know, no matter their gender or their race. So that's what that means. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, thank you so much for uh, having me. Um, I'm De Ching. Um, I'm a current college student. I guess given the amount of time, I'll just briefly talk about the performance portion of my work. Um, so what you see on the image um, is a package that I sent to my project partner so that you can actually access the website documenting the performance. Um, so the website is password protected. So um, they can only access documentation when they actually physically receive the package. Um, and it was made, um, I think January, 2021 this year. Um, so we were really far apart then. Uh, I was in Yantai, China and they were in California. So there was also this um, process of international mailing that was involved. Um, and so during the performance, basically I engaged in a process of doll making, which isn't shown on this image, um, but basically engaged in a process of doll making and kind of attempted to capture the shape of my face with uncooked doll. And then um, threw um, the doll onto a structure for what I call gravity examination. So like basically the inspiration for this performance came from my experience during the pandemic, during which I was forced to go back home to Yantai, China. Um, and, you know, and started eating steam buns with my family again in a really, really long time. You know, I always hated to eat steam buns when I was a child because I thought they're too solid and too dry. But, you know, I just noticed that when the steam buns are uncooked, they have like this elastic and fluid materiality. And I found that to be really beautiful and attractive. So I guess, um, you know, I was trying to play with that 
fluid material and what it means to me within this piece um, and also to explore, I guess, um, our bodily relationship with the food that we consume every day. Thank you. Mm. Hi, I'm Flora. Um, my piece is uh, a video of um, origami lotus blossoms that um, my family folded after my grandfather passed away um, last year. And um, his, I don't think you can see me possibly, but um, uh, his, um, I wasn't able to attend his funeral as it was in Taiwan, um, but my family sent me video of the various uh, morning rites. And um, one of them is that every week they would fold 108 lotus blossoms, origami lotus blossoms and burn them to send to the afterlife. So the video I'm showing at Sola um, documents the burning process of these origami lotus blossoms. And um, it's part of a larger video series. I also um, make, make a video uh, tracing the folding of a single lotus. And um, I've kind of done an installation using the gold um, from the Buddhist morning rituals. Um, and I would imagine this piece working really well as a large scale projection and I've tested it out. So I would love to see this piece in another form as well um, on this Buddhist sacred colored gold cloth as an installation. Is Jane here? I thought I saw her before. Okay, well, if she reappears, we'll come yeah. back. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Joanne Block. I live in Ojai and I have a, my art studio is in Ventura, right near the pier. Um, I just recently relocated from DC, uh, where I was living for 10 years. Um, primarily, my practice is grounded in queer culture and social justice. Uh, I work mostly in collage, but often I will go into other genres and use other materials when the concept calls for it. This piece that you're looking at is from a series called Origin of the Odd. It's uh, one of the instances when the concept drove the medium. Um, I attended a uh, residency at SVA in New York uh, in bio art. Um, this was during the time of the Syrian conflict and that got me to thinking it was very disturbing how humans hadn't really evolved much past the, the tribal mentality. Um, I read a book called Regenesis by Frank Church. It was about biogenetics uh, which had a chapter on pre-Cambrian, the pre-Cambrian era, which was the first appearance of the multicellular organisms. Um, they, in this book, they listed organisms by their Latin names, but they also had translated them into English. And for me, that was the aha moment. So these pieces uh, of the series, they have weird names such as spiny skin, uh, long hair, jaw, hair stomach, inside anus. Um, I just couldn't resist. So uh, the point being that we're all made from these odd queer materials. And I just wanna say, stop separating us into these rigid factions. Okay, so the next person, John, I guess is not here. Take a quick look at his work. 
Um, next person up is Kathleen. Hi, my name is Kathleen Greco. My studio practice comprises of works on paper, conceptual photography, and installation. I wanted to be part of this exhibition because the statement read, in a time when our communities are being threatened racially by racially motivated violence, we need voices that speak across differences. In my practice, I investigate uh, um, the perception of the body through social, feminist, and political themes. Recently, in my works on paper, I've been using flower petal pigment to stain the surface of the paper, implying loss social, and social stains difficult to remove, making transparent issues visible. In separating petals from the flowers, I am, then I connect them back by putting them on the paper. Uh, historically, flowers have been associated with funeral mourning rituals and coded messages through fluorography popular in Victorian times, giving someone flowers connected to a meaning. In this work titled In Lieu of Flowers in Memory of Breonna Taylor, species and floral colors were chosen for their meaning. I used in patients also known as touch me not because under pressure, ripe seed pods explode when touched and red associates with aggression. And also in the process of this piece, I use a, it's a wet flower, uh, it's a wet medium with the flower petal on 140 pound paper without blocking. So when that dried, that created tension in the paper. If you see the, the actual work, you'll see the paper is buckled, which was done on purpose to create this tension in the paper when it's dried. And what remains are permanent stains that transform over time, mirroring, mirroring changes, changes in our society, loss, fragility, and yet healing. I'll be traveling from Philadelphia to, to view the closing um, reception on Saturday. So I look forward to seeing everyone's work. Thank you. So we have a late arrival, Jen, who can only be here for a few minutes. So I'm just gonna go back to her real quick. Sorry about that, folks. There you go. Hello everyone, so sorry, um, I'm Legion Fan, and you can just call me Jin. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to the show and I'm very excited. Uh, I'm an art student at USC right now. My main practice is like many video, illustration, also fashion. But I would say I'm fairly new to artwork, so I'm still in the stage of experimenting and I really enjoy the process of it. So in this project that I had in the show is called Family Letter. I talked about the idea of nostalgia and the homesickness and the process, uh, the project started as a performance, but I made it into a video and added my own multi-layer and compressed quality aesthetics into it. In this work, I stare at multiple spots in Los Angeles and I go to the beach. I take my contact lenses out and put them into an envelope. Finally, I place, them, place the envelope in the ocean and then watch it drift away with the sea while hoping it could get to another end of the Pacific Ocean. Because I was born and raised in a coastal city in China, where it's actually right across the Pacific Ocean from Los Angeles. So I'm very drawn to the ocean and, um, and usually related to my home and life. Besides the ocean, I'm also interested in the idea of family letters, which could be found in many Chinese immigrants. But with the development of technology, people don't really do letters anymore. So I also think about them when I was creating the work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me get back. So glad you could join us for a few. Um, Here we go, Leah. Hi everyone, I'm Leah Connect. I uh, live and work in Pasadena, California, and I'm very happy to be in the exhibit. Uh, social justice issues are really close to my heart and my artwork in the last few years really dealt with that. And um, with all the anti-Asian hate crimes that have been happening lately, uh, my latest series was really focused on that. So this one, um, you know, I'm half Asian, but we've always had this pressure to fit into this Americanized idea of beauty, beauty standards, so standard beauty are kind of flip that title, uh, but we can't fit in because we look so different. <laughs> so 
So um, I notice there's been a lot of pressure um, always, you know, actually the hate crimes never went away. I, I'm 60 years old and it's always been that way. It's just been more publicized. And um, so after the, the Atlanta spa killings, you know, I just couldn't even stop thinking about what's going on with us. And, uh, and this piece kind of is part of a whole series called Whitewash, where we're just trying to fit in. And I noticed that a lot of the beauty products trying to make us look westernized were made by Asian companies, which is, I guess that makes sense, but it was, it was really interesting to see all these products that people were actually using. Um, it's kind of horrifying. <laughs> so I, I kind of made it based on um, the methods of print advertising and products. They're all printed with um, CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black only. So that's the color scheme of the faces, which are actually my relatives. And I uh, really blew them out and abstracted them so that they're more kind of universal. And then the, um, the text and the little notes on top, the little drawings, that's kind of what you would do in advertising when you mark up a proof and you're suggesting changes. Um, so that's how that came about. And it doesn't really show in the photo here, but it's a lot about also the projections of the, the faces and the um, products and the shadows on the back wall. So there's a lot of dimension. It's really hard to photograph, but anyway, that's kind of how most of my work is. It's all um, dimensional. Um, anyway, I, yeah, I hope, I hope things get better for us. And, and honestly, I think we should just all celebrate our own beauty and not try to become something else. And hopefully, like continue that. Okay. Thank you all. Bye. Hi, um, this is Lorraine Bubar. Thank you for including me in this exhibit. I personally really enjoyed the diversity of the work in the show. I have three pieces in the exhibit that all express my concerns about the quality of our cities, uh, its people, and the environment. My work is cut out of paper. Um, I cut it, it's layers of colored paper that I cut out with an X-Acto knife. And it's often hard to see that, like when you flip to the piece, um, it's hard to see that it's cut out of paper unless you're really up close, um, seeing them close. But I started working with paper because uh, I also really think it's important to be part of the global community of artists. So working this way has connected me with a global community of people who not only work with paper, but who make paper and cut paper because there's a long heritage of paper cutting in so many cultures around the world. Um, this piece upside down uh, is showing at a time where the, really, the world feels upside down. Um, it's about overdevelopment in cities and really expresses the disparity between those who have, who are building you know, these mega complexes and those who don't have are homeless. Um, and in this, there's a lot of figures. Some of the figures are barely hanging on. Some are still walking like the tightrope of hanging on. And others are like negative space because we really, all of us, spend so much time trying to not look at all the homeless who are on our streets or just walk by. And there's so many people in Los Angeles who just aren't seen at all. Thank you. Hi, can you hear me okay? I'm, I'm Bob Markovich. Um, uh, first, I wanna say thank you to Sola and to Anu, the juror, and all of the artists for uh, putting the show together. It's uh, very well, very well done. My project, uh, I have three images that are uh, probably out of a, a larger, much larger series of about 40 images from, um, it's called Entropy Part Two. And um, the project actually started before the pandemic, but both the process of making these images 
and the images themselves sort of fit right into what was what was going on with the situation. Um, the subject matter they're found found by chance, and um, I've specifically not chosen. Um, I guess what 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 are more desirable things? They're all insects or arachnids of some sort. Uh, but I stay away from dragonflies and ladybugs, and uh, I, wa I wanted there to be kind of a certain amount of discomfort um, with the images, and that these things are getting that kind of attention. Um, I also didn't want them to be macro insect photography, which there's a lot of great examples of that. For instance, uh, microcosmos. There, there's a lot of examples of that. Um, and I have a great interest in paper and sources. And I, I wanted to use the two together to create. Um, I've always, always been um, a lot of my, pretty much all of my work is uh, color oriented in some way. Um, so I've had, I mean, reactions range from disdain to, uh, to empathy to everything in between. And um, I like the fact that some, they're, they're difficult for people to categorize. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much. Mara's not able to join us today, but we wanna thank her for participating in the, um, in Fresh. Maxwell? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Maxwell. Um, I'm currently based in LA, but I'm originally from Santa Barbara, California. And I actually found out about this exhibition through taking on his class last year, um, The Course of Modernism. So thank you so much to Sola and also Anu for including me in this exhibit. Um, a lot of my work references um, like ex um, explorations of gender and particularly femininity, because that's been my experience. Um, and reflecting back on like quarantine in the past like 18 months, a lot of people have like sort of like discovered or like really leaned into their own um, gender identities and are like reflecting the insides to their outsides. Um, and I was talking to some trans friends about this, but when you're, this past year has been such a like period of isolation. And when you don't have like a sanctuary or a community to like go through this process with, um, it can very often become like, I don't know how to describe it. Um, like very often the ego can get inflated and um, you like this process of transition, especially with social media, it becomes like very like toxic and like very introspective. Um, so I kind of wanted to depict this using um, like the social media having like the the main figure with the phone in the hand and also the fluorescent lighting on both of the subjects faces um also the posing of the subject was very reminiscent of um Manet's olympia um and in that painting the subject has like a lot of accessories that are painted on that reference sensuality and sexuality um so i kind of like did a slight like allusion to that in this piece and in the background um I've been referencing a lot of Japanese folklore in my recent work. Um, and yokai are kind of like little ghouls or demons in a Japanese folklore that represent like mischief and just like being strayed off of like the correct path. Um, and I kind of wanted that to represent like ego and also just like this indulgence of ego that's so much like fueled by social media and just being distracted like on your phone, like the background in the in this piece is on fire, which is like very reminiscent of our current, the state of the world with climate change. So um, that's uh, my kind of like gist about this painting. Thank you so much. Michael, let's see. There we go. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right, thanks. Hi, uh, and thank you so much for including my work and uh, in, in the show. I really uh, appreciate being part of it and I love seeing all the work. Um, I started in my, my introduction to artwork was in photography um, and uh, I'm still highly influenced by photography. 
I think of my work as showing people in places doing things. So uh, narrative has always been very important to me. And in my uh, sort of earliest works, what I would do is create events and photograph them. And over time, I wanted to take those images and turn them into paintings. I became very interested in what painting could do specifically rather than photography and surfaces and surface versus image and all those things that, that painters like to think about because I'm uh, very responsive to sort of the tactility um, and the, just the beauty of the, of the surface of paint. And, um, and just kind of a desire to depict pleasure. And I find pleasure in, in things like flying and floating and things we, uh, you know, think of in, in sort of very positive dream states. So um, this image came from a, a model I, I photographed uh, floating and the, the qualities of photography that, I, that I, I like so much, which are sort of accidental things, um, photos tend to be very unprecious as opposed to paintings or drawings. All the little accidents and mistakes are, are kind of there. Things you didn't want show up. Um, and I'm very intrigued with the quality of light. So the light playing on the water and, and, and a person in the water is just a little bit irresistible. So um, those were all things I was thinking about. And as I started this series, which is largely women um, looking at themselves, taking pictures of themselves with their cell phones, because I got interested in the, this whole way we've culture started mediating things through screens and through cell phones. And I remember a day walking to a gallery and there's a big lobby and there must have been 15 people sitting on a bench. Every one of them was glued to their cell phone rather than <laughs> engaging in the people around them or the work around them or the life on the street, all that. So I just, um, I started thinking about why do we drag these phones around um, and then replacing in what traditional art history was often shown as the mirror, uh, the woman looking at herself with a cell phone, a uh, woman looking at herself. So all those things um, kind of together, came together um, for this piece. Thank you. Hello, Rona, thank you for having me. Um, I'm an interdisciplinary artist based in Albuquerque, New Mexico. My work revolves around themes of community childhood adversity, memory, and the fermentation of generational trauma throughout adulthood. Um, by working with materials of paper, um, Ojibwe art practices, personal medical scans, motion still imagery, and AI technology, my work acts to address these narratives of trauma by using the body, adversity, and power. I create work that seeks understanding of myself, my family, and the systems that connect us to our communal bonds. Entropy focuses on my personal trauma with the hospitalization of myself when I had COVID-19. Um, I suffered organ damage. And during this time, I pan uh, during the pandemic, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. And uh, overall, I was focusing on the secret invasion of illness and using it as a metaphor. And I noticed that this pandemic was causing a further divide. There were stories of Hurricane Katrina, of people now knowing their neighbors, they were helping each other out. They were, there seemed to be this like, you know, community being built and helping each other. But now, as you can observe with COVID-19, um, in this country, this instead was um, polarizing. And I think it's partially due to how America became America built through violence. That's, uh, that's my artwork, so that's it. <laughs> Sorry, I guess Michael might not, Michelle, sorry, might not be here. So we'll keep going. Thank you for being part of the show. And Molly. Hi, uh, thank you guys all for having me and for you all for being here. Um, my name is Molly. I'm a grad student at CSULB Long Beach or CSU Long Beach currently. Um, primarily I work in painting, but also occasionally vid video and installation. And my work deals with uh, the internet as landscape. Um, this piece in the show is entitled Wall of Sound. Um, and at this time, I was like 
looking at Google Maps kind of like as if I was going out to look for a landscape to paint, uh, thinking as the digital interface is like kind of like the window in the way that a painting is a window. Uh, and this is the wall outside the actor's mansion in Alhambra, uh, where he killed the actress Lana Clarkson and also held his wife Ronnie Spector hostage for a while. Um, so I thought it was interesting that there was this like dark undercurrent under the image, um, which kind of like reflected the dark undercurrent I see under tech companies like Google. Um, and you have the shadow of the Google Street View car like projecting on the wall. Um, so that's what this painting is about. Thank you. Nandi is not able to be here today, so we want to um, thank her for participating in the show. I did see Nicole. Hi, Nicole. thank you so much for being here. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my work. Um, I'm a graduate student at CSULB and I am in my final year, my thesis show. Um, my piece is about socioeconomics of, um, I would say homelessness in the downtown LA area, particularly Skid Row. And it um, mm. is talking about the juxtaposition of um, the epidemic of homelessness and what we inflate. Um, so it uses the pillow uh, that is an American flag and it's attached to a pneumothorax pump. Um, the pump is generally used for inflating the lung when um, the cavity is collapsed. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Nicole Rademacher wasn't able to make it today, um, but we want to thank her for her amazing piece that was a part of the show. Oh, I'm here. Yes. Can you see me? We can. Can you hear me? <laughs> OK. Um, all right, let's go. Um, well, good evening, everyone. And I want to send my love and gratitude to our esteemed juror, Nefertiti, Peggy, Tyler, Asha, and the whole SOLA team. Thank you for putting on this beautiful show of honored I'm very proud to be a part of it. The caliber of work is astounding and I'm enjoying everyone's uh, talk. Very interesting. So the paintings that I have in the show uh, are rainbow dolls, which features two baby dolls and in an inflatable rainbow and love from above that you're showing there, featuring Barbie and her best friend with hydroponic glasses, uh, kind of symbolic of a new start a focus on planting a new garden or a concern for our dear planet. Uh, and so um, both paintings were created during these last two years, not as a reaction to the events that we experienced, but just part of the flow of creativity of my body of paintings. I am a photoreal painter. I'm painting the subject of Barbies and vintage and new dolls and other dolls. Um, and uh, toys and food with the dolls. And my goal is to create a full lifetime body of work on the subject where each painting is like pages in a book, completely unique and yet cohesive as a whole. I see Barbie was created for children to live through the dolls and instill empathy to walk in someone else's shoes. And I want to redeem that notion and respectfully paint through the eyes of second childhood and see the dolls as a child does. Because Barbie always seemed to me <laughs> to be kind and to be a character that was like a friend to all. And she was really accomplished because she did everything. You know, she does everything. So it's a very um, uh, loving character. So now I started this painting Love from Above um, at the beginning of 2020. And I came down with COVID uh, and I was painting and I was so sick 
And then the tragedy of George Floyd happened and the lockdown. And then the painting became very important to me, like a, a total epiphany. Because I realized that the power I tap into to bring together all of us, bring all of us together and reflect a humanity of equality, love, and representing all of the dolls from dark to light skin, the Asian dolls, Hispanic, African-American, et cetera. And I feel like I'm doing something completely fresh by painting in particular black or African-American dolls and androgynous dolls, Asian, et cetera, and not just the white dolls. For the time has come to do this. And how exciting it is for me to be a part of bringing humanity together through painting. And I always wanted to, to do this. And so I feel now the world is ready. And so to conclude, the rainbow paint painting was completed this year. I just finished it about two months ago. And so both of them, they make a great diptych, but I didn't intend that at all. Um, I just noticed that the little African-American doll has a little lavender bow in her hair. And then the grown-up Barbie has like a little lavender uh, rainbow in her hair, which is so cute that they go together in a nice way, these two paintings. But I, did, it, I wasn't thinking that. Isn't that great how the creativity works? It's not planned. Um, so I guess I'm going to end right there. And I, the bottom line is the whole message that I want to express through my work is about love. And thank you. Thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you. Richard? I want to thank everyone uh, for including me in the show. I really appreciate it. And um, um, this work was really a special piece for me. Um, my work uh, focuses on societal problems and issues. And this uh, person was someone I met as I was um, feeding homeless downtown, which I uh, did for about 10 years. And I got to know him and he was called the doctor um, because he would make these um, bracelets out of uh, using copper wire. And um, when someone would, would be sick, he would give them one of the bracelets and it would help them get better uh, because it has a, a healing uh, quality. Um, also, uh, I, I do many other things other than um, drawing, but that is my focus and I have my own style of, of stippling where I use dots and scratches and basically whatever comes off the pen when I'm uh, hitting the paper. Um, so again, thank you so much for including me. I really appreciate it. Sarah? Hi, can you see me? Can you hear me? Okay, we can hear we you. Can Hello? Hear you. We, we can't hear you. see you. We can hear you. I'm trying to turn on the video. It says uh, stop video. Select a camera. FaceTime HD. No, but since we can hear you, why don't you go ahead and talk? Okay, terrific. Sorry about that. I, I'm new to this Eventbrite thing. I'm more used to Zoom. Um, yes, yeah, so my um, name is Sarah Stone. I, uh, I live in the West Valley and uh, I'm a multidisciplinary painter. And um, being in the West Valley, I'm sort of um, right in the middle of the uh, kind of fire zone that sweeps through every year. So I'm very kind of acutely aware of climate change. And so my work focuses a lot on the impacts that humans have on each other and on their environments. Um, usually I have a distinct plan for each painting that I do and I have a narrative that I kind of come up with before I start the painting so that I can kind of compose the whole thing. Um, but in the end of 2019 and during 2020, during lockdown, um, 
as we all were, I think I was very consumed with what was happening in the news. And there were fires in Australia and there was fires in California. There was, you know, police violence and, and, and it seemed like what was happening with our world and with humanity was really appalling and, and it still kind of is. Um, and so instead of having a plan to start this painting, which I call Darkness and Light, um, I also I didn't have the ability to go to an art supply store and get like the perfect canvas and the perfect board or whatever. I just dug through my studio to find what I had on hand, which happened to be uh, these strips of long strips of canvas. They're uh, 72 inches long. So I decided to make a triptych and um, and I didn't really have a plan when I went into it about, you know, what it was going to be when it was done. But it's a narrative that starts at the bottom left and works its way up to the top and then comes down from the right down to the bottom. And it is um, kind of a direct response to my feelings about um, humanity and, and where we're going and uh, climate change, police violence, destructive capitalism. And so, and I also, there's a poem in the middle which you can't read here, but hopefully you had a chance to see it if you were at the opening. Um, and the question I'm asking with this painting is, um, what do we want our future to look like? The left side is kind of optimistic and the right side is pretty dark and hellish. And I think we have the choice of deciding which way we wanna go. Anyway, I wanna thank you for involving me in this show. It's really exciting to be part of it. And I hope that I can meet you at the closing reception. Thank you. Shane, let's see. Alrighty. Looks like Shane was not able to join us today, so we'll move forward. Thank you so much for being part of the show, Shane. All right, Sylvia. Hi, uh, I'm Sylvia Wagensberg and uh, Happy to be in this show. Uh, it's been a great experience. Um, I am a painter originally from Barcelona, Spain, and uh, I have been uh, an artist and an educator all my life, both in Spain and in, in Los Angeles in the US. Uh, as an artist, uh, I am interested in, in groups of people and uh, how the individuals relate to the crowd that uh, they belong in terms of uh, 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 identity. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, uh, in, in 2020, I decided to uh, go to, uh, to visit the campus of uh, Venice High School where I worked for 15 years. And uh, uh, I started painting what I called location uh, portraits, which they are what well, they are. Uh, they are landscapes of what I what I saw. I've been visiting uh, the campus different times, and I'm still doing it because this my this series is still uh, I'm still working on it. Um, what interests me about uh, these uh, landscapes is again how do relate to a very large group of people, in this case, uh, students, teachers, uh, parents, administrators, custodians, and, and more, and uh, at this moment, particularly. So I've seen uh, many changes uh, during uh, all these months, and uh, um, they make me ask uh, questions that are interesting to me. For example, uh, looking at this one back to school, this is from April. It was an attempt the first time the, after a year uh, uh, that the crowd uh, uh, got back together, uh, that the students got back to school. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to me, uh, mm, how I see the transition and how um, uh, the individuals adapt as, as, as much as they can uh, with, um, of course, probably problems and, and, and frustrations. Um, 
but uh, it uh, it make, made me ask also in terms of uh, of uh, identity what does it mean for a crowd to disappear and to, to come back again and uh, and what does it mean for students and how do they relate to each other and to uh, 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 to their teachers uh, so uh, it's been interesting uh, and uh, that's what i do and what i continue to do thank you